Hey, this is Mr. Potter. In our pre previous lessons, we've been dealing pri primarily with one-dimensional data structures, arrays and array lists. And we will find it helpful to, to start dealing with multiple-dimensional array structures. Uh, basically, I can envision the idea of putting an array in, in an array. And I can do this explicitly. I mean, let me go ahead and uh, start the off public uh, class matrix begin and, and public static void main string args What I can do is I can say int array uh, array gets new int ten and what this did to us in the past is this created ten spaces in my array um, that I could store into integers in. So what I really want to do is I really want to have an int array array. In other words, an array of, of arrays. And I'm going to go ahead and call this matrix. And I'm going to say new int, and I'm going to have six rows and five columns in it. Uh, just completely arbitrary numbers that I picked. But what's important to note is, is that I'm creating an array of arrays. So I have five of these int arrays. So each of these interrays has size 6, and I'm creating 5 of them. So I can think of it as 5 successive rows of 6 elements. Or I can think of it as 6 rows of 5 elements. It's actually going to be helpful to think about it in that, that latter case. So what I can do is I can and fill this up using our traditional loops. So I'll say int int uh, actually for int row gets zero row is less than matrix dot length row plus plus and then in here I can say for int call gets zero call is less than matrix sub row dot length in other words I'm essentially asking Asking each row how long it is, and that's how, how many columns I'm going to have. And this allows us to have uh, something that's called jagged edges. So, in other words, I, I could envision a situation where I would have a, a matrix where the first row had six elements, the second row had 15 elements, and the 
third row had only three elements. But for, for our purposes today, we're, we're going to be talk, talking about, about rectangular matrices, where each row has the same number of columns in it. That being said, it's usually a good idea to go ahead and let this index be determined by the loop control variable for the outer loop. And what I'm going to do is in spot row comma call, I'm going to assign a value. Let's go ahead and say row plus call plus two. So what's happening here is I can imagine in my matrix, which looks something like this. Each row has six elements in it. Excuse me. Each There are six rows with, with five elements in each. So in this first position, this is row zero and column zero, so it's going to be nothing plus nothing plus two. This next position is going to be row zero column one, so this is going to be nothing plus one plus two, which is three. And it's going to be four, five, and six. And we continue. So this next one's going to be row one, column zero. So this is going to be three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be four, five, six, seven, and eight. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and so forth. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then this would be seven, eight, nine. 9, 10, 11. So let me go ahead and make this a block comment. So I know that that's what it sh should look like. And so, so this, this is how I've assigned it. I've assigned it using two for loops, one nested inside the other. And I'm going to go ahead and print out the results the same way, uh, but I'm going to use the, the for each loop that we've talked about before. So I'm going to say before, I'm going to have, have an int array called row. In matrix, and that creates an array called row, which has 
elements in, in it. So now I can go through the, those row elements. So I can say for int call in row. And I can system dot out dot print call. And so what I've done here is this is going to give one row out of the matrix, and then I'm going to go through that row, column by column, and print out the elements. And then, of course, it would be really, really nice to do a system dot out dot print line to print out lines in between, and we'll go ahead and make sure that this loop is in braces, because I kind of need it. And so now, if I run this, if I haven't done any egregious errors, like this, this one. So I don't want int array. This is just an int. So the thing is my row is composed of integers. Each column is an integer value. That was my mistake here. So I see the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me space in here just to make, make it more legible. So I do the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Exactly the same as what I predicted up here. So the idea is that I, I could have used that same for each loop up here to assign, and I could have used the same uh, uh, nested for loop up here to print it out. But, but the idea is that whenever I, I want to traverse a matrix, whenever I want to put data in or get, get data out of an existing matrix, I need to do it this way. I need to do it using a series of loops, either four loops or four each loops or while loops. But I need two loops, one addressing the row and one addressing the column. So the only other real thing that I want to talk about here is the idea of a um, the thing is we have string literals and we have array literals and if a matrix is just an array of array, then certainly I could have a matrix literal. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the same idea here. So I'm going to say char, and I'm going to make it a matrix, and we'll call it words, gets, and I'm going to do this as a literal. So Inside here, I'm going to have an array of arrays. So I'm going to have, uh, let's go ahead and call this uh, say A, A, L, L, 
L P H A B E and T. So that, that's my first row. My second row, we'll go ahead and say, uh, and I love this auto formatting here. these elements of the, this outer array. And, and then here's my next, next one, which is going to be, uh, let's do one, two, three, A, A B, B. So this is an example of a an array literal where this is a jagged matrix. In other words, the elements are not going to be the same. But I can do the exact exact same nested loop that we talked about to print this out. The only thing that I really need to change is that it's not an int array, it's a char array. And our elements are characters. And the name of my my matrix is words. So if I run this again, then it should print out Gadzooks. I forgot a semicolon and all that happened. What did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot to close one char, and the world exploded, and I forgot to open that char. That's why you need to proofread stuff. It's kind of essential. So I see alphabet, I see numbers, and I see one, two, three, A, B, C. Notice that the this matrix right here, here that I made actually had, had jagged lengths. Each one of the rows had a different length. And, and this loop was, was able to traverse it with no problem. So, so the main idea with what we're going to be doing this week in class Class dealing with matrices is we're going to be uh, dealing with arrays of arrays, and you're going to have to traverse them either by putting data in or taking data out using nested loops, one loop for each parameter. And keep in mind, the, the examples that I've done here, these are two-dimensional arrays, but I, I could have easily done three-dimensional three arrays. 
is where I talk, talk about X, Y, and Z. So instead of just being in column 2 and row 3, I could be column 2 of row 3 of sheet 3. Uh, and those of y'all who have dealt with Excel documents have noticed that you, you can have a row, a column, and a sheet. Um, I, I certainly could extend this to four dimensions. Let's talk about the X, Y, and Z position and the time um, for, for a helicopter that's flying. So I could talk about four-dimensional analysis. Um, basically think of it as an array of array of arrays of arrays. And I can continue this as, as deep as I need to. However, for for the AP, we're only going to be dealing with two-dimensional matrices. And the AP is going to be dealing almost exclusively with uh, rectangular matrices, not uh, jagged matrices. So we'll, we'll continue talking about matrices matrices this week, but once again, this, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.